Okay, hi everyone. We are going to continue our study of number theoretic algorithms and all headed towards this, this march of understanding uh, RSA encryption. So one of the really important things that we need to understand for this comes up in, I would say, most kinds of um, encryption and in many other areas of computer science too, is what's called modular arithmetic. So what does that mean is that we want to do arithmetic mod m. Um, so we want to do all of our normal operations like plus, minus, times, and divide, but not with normal numbers. We want to do all of this um, modulo sum m, where m is maybe a power of two, or maybe it's a prime number, or it's something else. Um, but that's uh, depend depending on the particular application. And so we're going to talk about how this works. Uh, you know, there's a formal definition of division with remainder here. Um, so this is just saying that Q is the quotient, uh, which is the floor of A divided by M. And R is the remainder. And that's really what we care about when we're talking about mod. So you remember the mod operator, which is uh, you know the percent sign in a lot of programming languages that you know. And you've done some things with this before, probably with uh, things like time. You know, when we're trying to find something about the time of day, we might take the hour mod 24 or the minutes mod 60 um, to get that remainder. That's important for those things. And it turns out to also be important for cryptography. And the Intuitive reason why this is valuable for a lot of computer things really has to do with the fact that the remainder is bounded. So the key of why, one of the keys of why this is so important is really this inequality right here. So the remainder um, are always less than n, less than m. That matters because what it allows us to do is we can have these operations on huge numbers, but we know that they're never going to go beyond whatever the modulus is, m. Um, so no matter how much plus, minus, times, and divide you do, if you're in the modular arithmetic world, everything is always going to be within these fixed bounds. Um, and so that lets us not worry about like, oh, what happens if it goes past the 32 bits of ints, or what happens if we lose precision with floating point numbers or anything like that. So we can be precise, uh, but also bounded because computers are inherently bounded in terms of how many bits they're working with with any kind of operation. So let's see a little bit of how this works. Um, first, starting with addition. So here's a table. This just completely says mod 15. What is every addition? So what am I doing with this table? Is I'm saying like, for example, 4 plus 7 is 11 mod 15. That kind of makes sense because 4 plus 7 is actually equal to 11. But if we add two larger numbers up, like if I say 10 plus 12, um, then looking at where those show up on this table, that's going to be 7 mod 15. So 10 plus 12 is 7 mod 15. And of course, that's you can calculate that by saying it's 22, and then you reduce 22, the remainder when 22 is divided by 15 is 7. So in the case of addition, it's kind of uh, straightforward. But it's important to understand that what we're doing here is we're defining like a different world for this operation of addition is um, any number that's in the mod 15 range. So any number between 0 and 14, I can add to any other mod 15 number and I get a third mod 15 number. So everything here is all between 0 and 14 and it's well defined. And then we can think about what should um, subtraction be. Well, subtraction can be defined in terms of addition. So negative something, don't think of this as like a negative number anymore. It can't be a negative number. Why not? Because a negative number has to be, uh, uh, everything that within this world has to be within that mod 15 world has to be between 0 and 14. So we can't just say uh, negative 7 is negative 7. No. What's negative 7 mod 15 is 8. 
Why is that? Is because it's the thing that I would add to seven to give me zero, um, modulo 15. So like negative three is equal to 12 mod 15, and negative 12 is equal to three in the mod 15 world. So what's important, and this is actually the reason why we are using mod, like I said before, is that we keep everything within this range of zero up to m minus one. And so another way of looking at that is that, uh, so I said negative seven is equal to eight. We can kind of see on this table that there's exactly one number which I would add to seven, which gives me zero, and that is eight. So that's why eight is negative seven mod 15. And you can compute that just by subtracting it from the modulus, or if it's zero, then negative zero is equal to zero. So what we're seeing is that addition is defined by doing the addition the normal way we know how, and then taking mod. But subtraction is defined a little bit differently. Subtraction is defined just by whatever this negative thing means. Um, and in particular, by computing the additive inverse, the negative number, that's, we use negative in quotation marks because it's still gonna be something between zero and m minus one, and then adding it like normal. So if we wanted to say, for example, what is, um, what is 11 minus three? Well, we can do this as a normal computation and see that it's gonna be eight, um, that's correct, but we can also view this as a modular addition. So this, we said that negative three equals 12. So this is the same as 11 plus 12 mod 15, which of course, when you do this, you're gonna get um, that it's 23 mod 15, which is eight. And in this case, we could have just subtracted 11 minus three, but I wanna emphasize that it works the other way around. So like if I said two minus seven mod 15, well, I'm gonna take that negative seven and convert it to its additive inverse. So that's the same as two plus eight mod 15, which is 10. And that um, makes sense because 10 plus seven mod 15 is equal to two. Eight plus three mod 15 is equal to 11. So it's this, the addition is defined by doing the addition and taking mod. Subtraction is defined by whatever uh, subtraction needs to mean uh, of the opposite of addition. Those same principles are, are gonna apply in exactly the same way now with multiplication. So with multiplication, again, for doing the multiplication itself, it's just do the multiplication and then take mod. So if I wanted to say like uh, six times eight mod 15, I would say, well, what's six times eight is 48? And 48 mod 15, while well, 45 is a multiple of 15, so 48 mod 15 is three. And so that's the answer. So six times eight mod 15, same as eight times six mod 15, it equals three. So again, doing it's just like doing addition. You can do the full multiplication, then take mod. But now let's think for a second about what division should be. So for example, um, what should four divided by seven B mod 15. This is now a more complicated question because what we're trying to say is what number could I multiply times seven, which would give me four. So to answer that question, if I have this full table, I can look across, I can say seven times something should give me four up oh, here it is. So I say, Okay, if I multiply seven times something, it'll give me four, and I see that it's actually seven itself, um, which makes sense because seven times seven is 49. Uh, so in this case, the answer is seven. Um, and I could also say like um, five divided by seven would give me five, okay. 13 divided by seven would give me four. Six divided by seven would give me three, um, and, and so on and so on. So the when we're trying to do a division, again, it's not, so with multiplication, you do the multiplication as if they're regular integers, then take mod. When you wanna do division in the mod world, it's something totally different. You have to think about what would be, um, what does division really mean? Is it the opposite of multiplication? And so what would be the inverse of that? And now we'll spend a little bit of time saying how do we actually compute the division? 
So computing uh, subtraction is kind of not too hard. You just have to subtract like from 15 in this case to get that additive inverse, but getting the multiplicative inverse is more complicated. So this is uh, saying the same thing as uh, multiplication with addition, but now multiple modular division is more complicated. And really what we want is what's called the modular inverse. And this is the number that would give us one if we multiply that in this case by B. So going back to this table, we were talking about like dividing by seven. What we really care about is the modular inverse of seven, which in this case, we can see it's wherever the one appears in that row. So this means that seven, the inverse of seven equals 13. Inverse of seven mod 15 equals 13. And why is that? It's because seven times 13 is I think 91. Yeah, is 91, which is one modulo 15. So it's the thing we could multiply times seven to get one uh, modulo 15. And that means that if I wanted to do four divided by seven, well, we did this just by looking across the row, but we could also say four divided by seven is equal to four times the inverse of seven. So four times 13 and four times 13 mod 15 is equal to seven. So we get the same answer out. Um, but we can do it now by doing multiplication. So the, the question is, how do we actually find this modular inverse? And actually, when does it even exist? What you'll notice is that if we go back to our table, we can see that for seven, we have a modular inverse uh, because there's a one in this row. But for some values such as 12, if I look across the row for 12, there's no one here. So if you look across this row in the multiplication table, this is saying that no matter what I multiply 12 by, I never get one as a result, mod 15. Now take a second to think about that. What is it that um, makes 12 not work? Um, well, it's because if you look here, it's every time we multiply by 12 and take mod 15, I always get a multiple of three. And one is not a multiple of three, so I'm never gonna get one. And that kind of makes sense because 15 is also a multiple of three. So whenever I have something which has a common factor with my modulus, that's what's going to make a problem of non-invertibility. So let's actually look at all of those. Um, so I'm going to circle in red the non-invertible elements. And I can see that zero is not invertible. That kind of makes sense. You can't divide by zero. Um, but so is three so is six, so is five, uh, nine, 10, and 12. So in all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers which have a common factor with 15 and therefore are uh, non-invertible. And that means that the invertible numbers are everything else. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, did I count wrong? Four, five, six, seven. So that means there must be eight. Oh, I forgot about eight. Um, okay, so there's eight invertible elements here. So there's seven of the of these numbers in the mod 15 world, seven of them that don't have any inverse. So seven things we can't divide by and eight things we can divide by. And so that's, that's kind of the, the point of this next slide is to say that which things have an inverse and which things don't. Let's, let's actually write this down for um, mod 15. So what has an inverse would be anything that doesn't share any common factor with 15. So like one, two, four, seven, eight, 11, 13, and 14. So there's eight of them. And then the, everything else is what doesn't have an inverse, like 0, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 12. And this is going to be really important because it kind of defines when we can do division or not. Um, and so what we'll see is that if something has an inverse, then we can divide by these things. 
And I want to emphasize again that I'm going to use divide and I'm saying divide and that's how we write it. That's what we're talking about mathematically, but it's dividing in the mod 15 world. So what is this saying is that two has an inverse mod 15, four has an inverse mod 15. So I can take any number and divide it by four. So I can take like nine divided by four. This does not give me 2.25, right? Nine divided by four does not equal 2.25. In the mod 15 world, what is nine divided by four? It's whatever I would multiply four by to get nine. And so to answer what that is, I could think about like what's the inverse of four mod 15 and you can see that four times four is 16 which is one mod 15. Um, so I can say this is the same as nine times the inverse of four mod 15 which in this case the inverse of four is just four itself so this ends up being 36 which is six uh, and, and you can check that by checking that 4 times 6 is 24, and that's 9 mod 15. Okay, so we can divide by 4 here specifically because 4 is in this list of what has an inverse, because 4 doesn't have any common factor with 15. And uh, we can apply the same rule for different modulus. So, so far we looked at mod 15. Let's think about how it changes if it's mod 13. Take a second to look and see which numbers mod 13 are invertible and which ones aren't. Which ones have a one in their row. And you'll notice that this is the only non-invertible. Number is zero. Why does that make sense? Is because, okay, you never divide by zero. That's kind of, uh, we understand that from a long time ago. Um, but in the case of 13, why is 13 different than 15, where everything is invertible except zero, is because 13 is prime. So we remember what we said before is that the things that are not invertible are the numbers that have a common factor with the modulus. So in the case of mod 15, it's everything that has a common factor with 15. But in the case of 13, nothing has a common factor with 13, except for technically zero is a multiple of 13. Um, and so that's why everything else has an inverse. We can see that there's a one in every other row, except for the row with zero. So there's a name for this idea of saying for any number n, how many um, integers less than n don't have any common factors with n. So this is a complicated way of writing um, that phi of n, which is this symbol is a phi, or phi, but for some reason I'm used to people saying phi when they're using it in this context. Um, and so this is saying how many, how many uh, numbers have inverses. So for example, phi of 13 is 12. Because 13 was a prime, so every other number, so 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 12, they all have inverses. But phi of 15, what we saw is that there was only 8 um, invertible numbers mod 15. Because there's 7 that have some common factor with 15. And there's a general formulas for what phi is uh, that we could write down. But the important one for us in terms of talking about RSA is that if I have a prime, so phi of a prime is P minus one, that's what I just wrote up here. And if you have the product of two primes, so phi of P times Q, 15 is a product of two primes, it's three times five. And this is gonna be P minus one times Q minus one. So what does that mean for 15? So 15 is three times five. And you can check that the totient function is three minus one times five minus one which is two times four, which is eight. So that's, um, this, this goes back a few hundred years of mathematics. It's an interesting case of mathematics that everybody thought would be kind of just purely theoretical and useless. And then it turns out to have this important applications for cryptography that we're gonna see.